Hi everybody, welcome to our ARI Tech Talk Live webinar for the ECS department. As you can see, we have here masks. I will take them off now. And to be sure that we keep the distance, because nowadays in the COVID time, we have to keep the distance. We uh, have like two positions, one in the front and one in the back. And when we uh, have to change the positions, we will do this simultaneously in a circle. First of all, big thank you to our great team at ARI. It is uh, the marketing department and the event department. It's we have here um, Henning, we have Rosie, Jan, Simon, then we have here in the room um, Florian Rettich, Annalena, and Saskia. So big thank you for doing all this managing and organizing this webinar. My name is Christina Chai. I am the product manager for Electronic Control System and I'm Hendrik Voss. I'm also product manager for Electronic Control System. So we're doing this all as a team. And this webinar is all about the, uh, uh, the ERM 2400 LCS external radio module. This is what is the ERM stands for. The first part of the webinar is all about the technical back, um, background specifications. And the second part is about use cases. So you can see um, sample configurations for the ERM. So let's start. The ERM, so with the first slide, the ERM is an, um, as I already said, a long range solution for, let's say, LCS or LBUS cable connection, and it sends the data uh, wirelessly over a radio instead of the cable. It uses the operating mode, um, the point to point connection, that means that the data is like uh, transmitted as a bit rate over one single line. This is important to know because as you already used from the, um, let's say WC4 for example, or from the SXU, they are using the network mode. So this is not working for the ERM because it's one single line. So, so you always have one ERM connected to a hand unit or to a camera. The ERM uses the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band and it's called also a, um, uh, uh, how do you say, um, a frequency hopping method for transmitting the data. And to get to know like a little bit more details about this frequency hopping, I will hand over to Hendrik in the back of me. Yeah, um, maybe just, just put it on the slide. Um, so we have basically two different uh, possibilities to transmit or to to transmit uh, radio uh, um, information over radio signals. And um, the goal of those methods is really to spread the spectrum so it's less prone to interference. And on the ERM2400, we, we use a frequency hopping method. Um, and its abbreviation is uh, FHSS. It's a frequency hopping spread spectrum. It's really a tongue breaker, as we say in Germany. And it means that, you know, the, 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 the native band that's transporting the information is quite a narrow band um, in the 2.4 gigahertz range. And this narrow band is then jumping uh, in, a, in a timely manner uh, throughout the available band. And um, if there's interference, it will only be hitting the, the, the frequency shortly and then it jumps to the next uh, frequency. So by doing this um, and, and using the whole bandwidth of the available band, uh, it's less prone to interference. Um, the other method uh, is the direct, um, the direct uh, sequence spread spectrum. That one we are using on the WC4 or in our internal camera uh, uh, radio modules. And that's basically another method. And in, in this uh, method, uh, the very narrow band is, is uh, spread uh, or to be a little bit wider. And by doing this, uh, it stays in, the, in a defined spot on the frequency. So that is why we have channels that you can select. And whenever you, uh, you have uh, a channel that is free from interference when you are fine, and if you have a, sh a small narrow banded interference, you're also fine because we were spreading the spectrum and then the error can be corrected. There's quite some redundancy in the signal. 
but if the interference is uh, using a little bit wider part of the band and covering more or less the whole area that we are using for our signal, then you get interference. So both systems have some advantage and some, some disadvantage, but now with the ERM2400 we are using the, the frequency hopping scheme. Now with this information I give back to Christina. Thanks Hendrik. So the ERM2400 LCS can be connected to Hans unit, for example SXU WC4, I can show you a slide in your slide. So you, uh, you can see here WC4, the SXU, and it also can be, uh, be connected to Simotion's hand unit, the Cipro hand unit. There are also units which, which don't have an internal radio module installed, and this is for example the OC1 or the master grip. Uh, both of them can be used, uh, for example, if you don't have an XXU on the set, but at a WC4 and you need a second wireless hand unit, then you can use the OC1, for example, with the ERM as a hand unit. Uh, we will show this later on in one of our setups. Um, the um, uh, radio modules, they are uh, usually come with like um, a set with two radio modules and including a power cable and different wireless cables for, let's say, um, LCS connection, for Elbus connection and for the XX day connection. That means we have cables which, ca uh, which are going from the ERM, FSCAN to the different um, connectors. So over here you can see three of them uh, on the right side, uh, for example, there is the Albus to FS CAN connection. And um, it's interesting because uh, all of them from the FS CAN, they, uh, they are female connectors and the, uh, the Albus version is also female. This is really uh, helpful because we have a, a wide range for Albus cables and they're all male and you can use them with different kind of lengths uh, to, uh, to, use, uh, uh, to go with, with, uh, with our devices. Some of, uh, of you may will ask what is the FS stands for in the name FS CAN. Actually FS stands for FOMA system and this is a good thing to point out because the ERM is uh, developed by FOMA, uh, especially for ARI and it's also exclusively um, sold by ARI. And the FS CAN, that means there's a, a, a certain CAN bus done by FOMA. So the ERM, we already had it uh, on several sets out there. We, it's, we have it uh, last year on the film, it's called Fast and Furious 9. The, uh, this was quite challenging because this was a set uh, in the jungle in Thailand and we had there a lot of uh, stunts and uh, a lot of car scenes, of course, as part of the Fast and Furious. Um, and we made it. We had the full range. The range of the ERM is about 1,000 uh, meters. That's uh, a, a little bit over 3,000 feet, and it hit the range. And there had we also had a second movie um, last year. This was Ford uh, versus Ferrari, and it also worked quite well there. It was it was uh, really great to have it on the set. So let's talk about and um, about the user interface of the ERM. You can see over here, but the thing is that it's quite small, so I will show you um, a slide because then you can s see more details. So at the beginning, you can see that on the right side, uh, there is the three letters LCS. Actually, these three letters, they only are showing us which is already um, uh, uh, which already written on the uh, on the cover of the ERM. It's the LCS version. We also have a, a version for the SRH3, but this is the LCS version. This two versions are not compatible. They have the same frequency, but they're not compatible. So the next uh, thing is we have there is called linked. The linked means the link ID. The linked ID here is shown with the, t uh, with the numbers, for example, 10, 18. And it's important to point that out. That means when you have two radio modules, they have to be, um, they have to be prepared as well uh, and, and, and they have to have the same numbers over there. There's also a possibility if the radio module is um, the powering is shut off that you can see on the right side so over here of the radio module there is um, uh, there's a, a code on the right side and then you can see the serial ID from uh, number from the radio module. So please check this out because only two radio modules which are 
um, already paired, they can work uh, with each other. So coming, going, um, um, coming now to the next line, it's the region. Uh, the region, we have it um, in three zones. The first zone is uh, for Europe, for New Zealand and for Australia. And the second zone is for USA, for Canada. And the third zone is for Japan. So where's the difference between the three zones? Actually, um, the, the, uh, the main difference is the power, um, how I say, the power which is transmitted. So the US ver uh, version has one watt, and the Europe version, for example, has 100 milliwatt. So there's a really big difference between these two, um, um, this, this uh, uh, two power transmission. So please be aware and, and uh, check out which uh, region is installed on your radio module. Now um, coming to the next uh, line, it is they are written LCS. So this is a uh, quite nice feature because um, Hendrik will uh, tell you a, a lot more about this, that we have on the camera different kind of connectors. We have uh, LCS, we have on the Alexa Mini F, for example, elbows with the mount, and we have elbows devices and we have X uh, connectors. And the thing is that there are different protocols which are um, spoken uh, between the two devices. So actually this uh, information indicates the, the protocol which are talked between the two devices. So now I hand over to Hendrik and he will tell us more about these protocols. Yes. Basically, um, we, you know, we have different protocols uh, that we use to, uh, to communicate between our devices. Um, and uh, basically it's three protocols. We have the LCS protocol that lens stands for Lens Control System. That was the first protocol that we used. Came out when we, uh, when we started um, shipping our first lens control system many, 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 many years ago. And it had a motor, it was called a CLM1, uh, basically also a daisy chain canvas based motor, a little bit like the Seaforce motor, but like 10 times the size. And, um, and this LCS protocol was used to communicate between a wired handset and the motor, for example. Um, the years were passing and we added features over features over features. So now we can do camera control and many other things through the LCS protocol. It's basically the protocol that we are usually using if you want to hardwire a hand unit like a WCU4 or like a SXU1 with a camera device, like a camera itself, for example, the LCS connector of an Alexa LF camera or a, a UMC4, for example. So this uh, protocol is really important to, uh, to know and to use when we want to use uh, the ERM 2400 LCS. The other protocol that's important uh, is the Airbus protocol that was basically developed with C-Motion. And um, we are using it with the C-Force motors and the Alexa Mini, the Alexa Mini LF, and also in the meanwhile with the UMC4 and the, and the Alexa LF on the LCS connector. Um, but it's important to know that, for example, the, the, um, the WC4 does not support the Elbus protocol. Now you might wonder why do, does it tell us that uh, the WC4 is not supporting Elbus? Of course, because it has an LCS connector. But that's a tricky bit in, in the whole thing. We have some connectors that support multiple protocols. That is because we were adding features over the time or we didn't have enough connectors on the space on the whole camera, enough real estate on the camera, so we are combining things on one connector. And um, if you want to connect a ERM on a camera with ERM on a handset, as Christine already mentioned, it's basically like a cable connection. So you feed in information from the cable into the ERM, then it's packing this information, transmitting it over the air, to the other ERM, this ER other ERM is receiving this, unpacking it and putting it back to the cable. So of course, if, if this happens, the two sockets, the two connectors, or the two devices have to understand this same protocol. If I have a device that transmits Elbos, but the counterpart device doesn't understand Elbos, but LCS, it doesn't work. 
So this is important to understand. Um, with the classical Alexa cameras, we have, for example, the LCS connectors. Um, and, it's, and of course, the LCS protocol goes over it. Then on the Alexa LF, we have additionally the Elbus protocol on the LCS connector. That is why we can drive a Seaforce motor from there. And on the Alexa Mini, and on the Alexa Mini LF, for example, we have an Elbus socket on the mount. And through this interface, of course, we have an Elbus protocol, but we also have an LCS protocol. And on the EXT connector, of course, we have an EXT protocol, which, by the way, is the third protocol, but not really relevant for this hand unit camera combination. It does like synchronizing multiple cameras for 3D and so on. So on the EXT connector, we have the EXT protocol, but also the LCS protocol, not the Elbus protocol. So this is quite complex, as you know, and this is why Christine mentioned it's really helpful to have this indication on the ERM. Because we are seeing here wired LCS. We see, okay, the signal that comes from the camera into the ERM is LCS. So you can look on the two ERMs and you can see if it both speaks the same protocol, it can communicate. And since our handsets like the WC04 and SX01 always only do the LCS protocol, it's important that the counterpart also does the LCS protocol. Whereas devices like the OCU1 or the Master Grips, for example, can do both. They can talk LCS and LBUS. So a Master Grip or OCU1, you can also connect hardwired or through an ERM with a Seaforce motor, and it will work. So with all this information, I think you have to digest this a little bit, and I give back to Christina. Thank you, Hendrik. So, uh, we, so we learned already that the LCS is coming out from the WC4. And the LCS protocol also is coming out from the, from the SXU. So this is also our first uh, setup, because now we are coming to our second part of the webinar. So in this setup, we have the Alexa LF and we have the SXU1. The SXU1 has, as I already said, the LCS connector. And we uh, connected this with this cable to the FSCAN uh, connector from the ERM and on the side from the Alexa LF, we connected it to the LCS cable over here. So in this connection, then we did um, daisy chained the elbows connection to the LCS. So this setup provides the full iris control for the lens. So I think this is a, is a, a setup which is quite nice to have on the set. For example, when you have a DRT, DRT is uh, sitting in a tent quite far away from the, the operator and he have really have to have a long range. So now we have, of course, always the focus puller. So let's take a WC4. I will turn it on. And the WC4, yes, now it works, is connecting now and controlling the focus axis. But the big difference is that the WC4 is now talking to the internal radio module, the AMIP, as we know, the white radio, inside the camera. So we have one connection, the AMIP, the AMIP from the camera and the WC4, and we have the ERM connection from the camera and the SX01. And I prepared something quite nice. It's the OCO one. Some of you maybe know it, some of you not. So I will show some details about it because it has a really quite nice feature we call override function. Before I, have to I do that, I will have to turn this off, the S601, and turn the, the OCO one on. Take this off. So the ERM is now from the FSCAN to Elbus connection. And there's one special thing um, which I have to mention. So um, the ERM gets the power out of the WC4 or of the SX01. But in this um, case, the ERM doesn't get any power out of the OC1, of course, because the OC1 doesn't have any uh, internal battery as we use from the SXU and WC4. So we have here um, 
as you see, uh, we have here a battery and we mount the and we and, and, and we mount it's uh, quite nice. We have a D tab connection and just go inside this con um, this Elbus connector. So now I show this quite nice feature. We call it, as I said before, override function. This means that, for example, if the operator is somewhere far away and the focus puller is somewhere far away, and there's something I think it's quite nice um, uh, during this time of, of, of COVID, because we have to keep the distance, uh, the operator, in that case, for example, if, if the um, operator is somewhere, let's say, um, 500 meters away, and the, and the DOP has the OC1, he can take the control with only one click on the button. So um, I press this button, I already pre-configure it, and then now I have to control on the focus axis. So actually, the uh, WC4, as you can see over here, the focus scale now turned red. This means that the, that the focus puller cannot control the focus uh, anymore. Actually, t there are two ways to get the focus back. One way is that the focus puller just press one button over here that is called FOVR, or the second way is that the operator also press the OVR button again and, and, and give it back. So I do this now. So now I don't have any control uh, over here anymore, but I have the control um, again here. But this is still red. Oh no, this is still green, yes. And now I have to control. So this is quite helpful for this kind of situation where you have to keep the distance. Um, now I hand over to Hendrik because we already um, have seen there are these setups. We can see that you have the, the camera control with the WC4 with the ERM. You have the lens control uh, with WC4, with the OC1, with the SXU, with the ERM. Uh, so you have the full functions which are uh, important. Thank you, Christina. Uh, very interesting setup, uh, by the way, also because you can not only override the focus, but also the iris, if you like to. Um, here in this uh, case, um, I just wanted, to, we just wanted to show you another use case with the Alexa Mini LF, which basically is the same way also works for the Alexa Mini. So in this case, I've connected the RM2400 LCS to the XT connector on the one hand, on the other, on the camera side. And on the other hand, I've built a little thing here, actually quite balanced. Um, I, I, I used the L bracket uh, to, to mount the ERM on the WCU4 plate and then connect the FS Khan bus to the LCS. Now, if I look at the screens here again, I see the protocol that is used is the LCS protocol. That is because the LCS protocol is also on the EXT connector. And I can do all the things I can do in, uh, in, uh, with a normal radio module or in hardwired mode as well. I get lens data, I can change camera settings, um, and I um, can um, yeah, also um, send a lens file to the camera, for example. Now in this setup, I've uh, connected it to the EXT. I could also connect the ERM to the Airbus on the motor. And uh, just again to think these protocols through, um, why can I connect it to the motor? I just said, I think before that the Airbus, uh, that the CFOS motor only speaks Airbus and not the LCS protocol, but we are using the LCS protocol because the WC4 cannot do anything else. Um, that is because the, the protocol is looped through the motors to the camera and the camera then does a control and uh, so then even the LCS protocol works. So with this information, I give back to my colleague Christine. Thank you, Henry. We are now having a third setup. We have here the Aricam um, LT over here and we have mounted here the, our CFIRS Mini RF motor and this is a quite nice setup and Hendrik will do that but I forgot something um, before we have the OC1 here again with the nice setup and the OC1 is already like used uh, for some really nice uh, productions for example the production Dune uh, Craig Razor has it over there and I think it's nice to mention because this is, was quite challenging 
and she will like it. And I think there's something we should mention because it's such a small tool, people can use it in uh, various ways. And we had it on really different production, for example, also the Netflix production, Gentrofried and some others in Germany. Uh, last week he was on, on a production in Berlin, so it's quite nice during this COVID time. So now I hand over to Hendrik. So we do this uh, rotating um, procedure. We, we keep the distance. We keep the distance. Which we always do anyway. And <laughs> here I am. Yeah, we have a film camera here. We did this setup just to show you that it's not only working with digital ARRI cameras, it's also working with analog cameras and, the, uh, and you could replace the analog camera also with a camera of another manufacturer, for example, with a RED camera or with a Sony camera. So, um, and you see the setup here is a little bit interesting that we did. So. Um, we have an ERM here on the camera and it's connected to the C-Force motor and from there to a C-Force Mini RF and then from there to the RS socket to get the power from the camera. On the other hand, we have the WCU4 and then daisy chain the LCS through the OCU1 to the radio module. So because the WCU4 only speaks the LCS module, uh, the LCS protocol, and the C-Force motors, uh, the classic ones, don't do that. We were choosing a C-Force Mini F because that also does the LCS protocol. So like this setup, uh, it, it works. Um, and then, so I can control now the focus, for example, from the handset, from the WCO4. And I've split off the, the iris on the OCU1. So that can be useful if you have a, a, a setup uh, where maybe the DP is just next to the focus pool or maybe in a car and he wants to have a separated control that could also be zoom by the way. He can do that or she can do that with the OCU one. So we just wanted to show you this. I think there are many ways to configure this. It's probably not the most sexy but maybe the most interesting what I did here. Um, and that's basically it. So um, I hope you have some questions. We are happy to get questions. Uh, we, we hope that we have the answers for your questions. And um, please ask. Your question will be, we have a mouth here saying your question to us. Yeah, thanks, Hendrik. Thanks, Christine, for dancing in the circle. So yes, there are a couple of questions we have for you. So one is, <coughs> why use a new connector if exist Albus and LCS? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> it's basically, you know, the ERM uh, was developed by FOMA and not the LCS version, but uh, the version for the SIH3. That was because it was really a requirement to have a really reliable radio connection on the stabilized remote head, of ARI's stabilized remote head. That is also developed by FOMA. So they did that box and they have their FOMA CAN bus system. And this is, by the way, just a connector, they had their connector on their systems. So we are using this and we had to uh, then provide an adapter and that is basically the cable. But the protocol is not in this case, the FS Khan protocol, but that's the protocol that we are, trans that we are feeding into the system. And in this case, it's the LCS protocol. It's a good question, um, but that's the reason. Okay, here's an easy one which came in by email. So what is the size and what is the weight of the device? Okay, there I have to, uh, to cheat. I ah. tried to learn it off it and I forgot it. So, uh, I, but uh, of course we are prepared for this question. The, the weight is 380 grams and 11 by nine by four centimeters. So as you see, it's, it's a rugged device, really. It, it's b a little bit like a brick. Um, we have seen it on sets on, on car rigs and you can really, really, really rig it hard on a the, on the car. It has several uh, interfaces, like for example, three eight inch uh, interfaces and um, it's, it's really solid. The connectors are also solid. Um, yeah, of course, with the, with the dimensions, you also have to, to, to add the connector size, which is three centimeters, maybe four. All right, so another short one. What is the latency in transmission? Oh, 
the latency in transmission, I've, I'm afraid that one I can now not here really answer. It's, it's quite fast. We didn't have complaints about, uh, about too much latency. Uh, I can try to measure that out somehow. I, I don't have the answer right now. Yeah. Okay. Another one. Uh, why does the 900 megahertz version have a longer range than the 2.4 gigahertz version? Where the 900 megahertz is, uh, is, uh, um, is actually a longer wavelength, with which, which is not um, disturbed by objects so much like a shorter wavelength. Um, and, and that is why it has a really long range. The 900 megahertz version, we don't have a 900 megahertz version for the LCS version. We just have the 2.4 gigahertz version. But we have a 900 megahertz version for the SH3. There are two different um, module types. And indeed, it has a, it, it has a longer range. But it also um, has a, a sh more shallow bandwidth. And um, we th we've tested a lot of things, and we found that uh, the 2.4 gigahertz version is pretty, pretty, pretty good and covers more areas than the 900 version, just for one. So that you can use the 900 megahertz just in USA and Canada. And this uh, 2.4, when you switch to the right zone setting, you can use it in other regions as well, like Europe and Australia and New Zealand and Japan. Um, and I it initially it explained the frequency hopping thing, and y maybe you remember that we had those spikes of of the of the uh, of the band that is just used at a certain point in time, qu quite narrow spikes, which are then uh, like hopping through the spectrum, and if there's no other frequency used in this sp spectral range, then those spikes can hop around and don't get disturbed. And, and you don't have interference. But if you have several systems in this range, in this spectrum, spectral range, and, and more systems are hopping around, the, it, the occurrence is higher that they will hop onto each other and interfere with each other. And this spectral range is more shallow with a 900 megahertz version than with a 2.4 gigahertz version. So, with the 2.4 gigahertz version, we feel it's a little bit more safe to use multiple systems in parallel, even though we recommend, if not necessary, to you, or we recommend, of course, to, to keep the radio, con the radio use as low as possible in order to, to get, keep the frequency band as free as possible. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers a little bit the question. Is a 900 megahertz is a different is, is a certification thing that is cannot be used in different regions like 2.4, and also the user bandwidth is a little bit more narrow. But as you said correctly, it has a longer range, and for really critical applications where you don't have a lot of parallel systems and where you are in the right region to use this, it's certainly a good system. But we don't have it for the LCS protocol, only for the SIH3. All right. So there's a question about uh, the number of units which can be connected at one time. So I think you maybe refer to the network mode. As Christina mentioned in the beginning, this system is a point-to-point -point system. So you can always connect one camera device with one hand unit device, one by one, like a cable, basically. That's more or less, it's replacing a cable. In, uh, and but with our with our previous radio module like the EMIP 400 and 300 that we have in our wide radio system, there we offer a, a network mode. And this network mode that we have a camera master device, and then we have client radio modules that synchronize to the master and that can then uh, speak to it. And multiple clients can speak to one master. So up to three clients can speak to one master. That is with the wide radio. With the, with the ERM, we just have to point to point solution. Another question was, will it work with the UMC3 controller? Yes, because the UMC3 controller also has a LCS connection. And since it can speak LCS protocol, and this protocol is valid, as I mentioned before, it just takes the protocol out of the cable wraps it in a, in a wrapper, then transmits it over the air, de-wraps it, and puts it back into the cable. It works, yeah. 
How easy is it to switch the zones? Uh, the zone switching is not really a magic, but you cannot do it as a customer. You have to send your device to the RE service. Or, of course, in the different regions where we sell these devices, those zones are pre-configured. But if you need to change this, you have to do it at the RE service. How does a software update work? How Same do you do way. Uh, um, so you see, the, this device doesn't really have a user interface. It has a graphical user interface, a screen, but there's nothing to, no buttons or so on. So there again, if a, ne if a software update is necessary, uh, you have to send it to, uh, to the RE service uh, for the software update. But since it's um, only like transmitting uh, uh, incoming signal and then um, getting it out, it's, uh, uh, we, we will not have so many software updates like on other devices. Here comes a product idea from South America. Are you planning a release for a more small unit like C-Motion, C-Pro, Kamen that work like Extender 2? Like this? It's uh, <laughs> thank you first of all. Thank you for the feedback. We always want this. Um, this is basically the chip that is in there is quite big and it also generates quite heat. So uh, th there are some reasons why it's big like this. We, if we could, we would have th looked at integrating this in the WCO4, but it's too big. So at the moment, we have no other way. But of course, we hear your wish, and we look at what we can do. But at the moment, this is what we have and what we can do. Somebody is asking an unknown, an unknown person, I don't own an RF motor. Would, as, would I connect my UMC4 instead on a film or a non airy camera to use the system? Yeah, you can, absolutely. You can, because you can connect this to the LCS connector of the UMC4, then connect your CLM motors, for example, or even a, C yeah. or even a C-Force motor, um, because the UMC4 would then translate, you would the, co the, the connection between the UMC4 and our handsets is LCS, so this works. And then you can either connect a C-Force motor to the LCS of the UMC4 or you connect a CLM motor, both works. Do we have plans for 90 degree connectors? Um, yeah, you, um, <laughs> we can look at it. You mean probably the, uh, I, mean I don't actually know of if this connectors exist in 90 degree, but we can have a look at it, definitely. If, if it's a wish from you, then we will, will try to fulfill your wish. It sounds like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We will, I will look at it, I promise. Last question. Can I switch from 100 milliwatt to 1 watt? You yourself cannot. The RE service can, but, on, but then please only use it in the region that you are allowed to use it, because the 100, uh, the 1 watt version is uh, FCC compliant working in the US. If you use it anywhere else, it's not legal. This was the last one. Thank you so much for answering that and for presenting. Yeah, thank you to Christine uh, as well. And thank you to all, uh, to all uh, our friends and, and guests here um, in, the, in the tech uh, talk live. We appreciate that you took your time uh, and, and spend this time with us. Um, it's, not a it's not an easy time, it's a difficult time. We all have over the whole world the challenge uh, of the coronavirus. It's hard for, for our business, I hope, and we all hope here that, uh, that we will get over it soon and that we can somehow find a way to continue the productions. And, um, and this is really a global thing, it hits all, all as humans being the same way, we are all vulnerable to it, so we are all the same anywhere in the world, no matter where we are from or what we do. So um, I hope that, that uh, the situation gets normal again and I wish you all the best and thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.